Today we shall discuss a group of conditions called primary immune deficiency diseases. And continuing the series of my presentations, today I shall focus upon phagocytic defects. Now phagocytes, that is the neutrophils, are the cells in our body which phagocytose the microorganisms and kill them. And if these phagocytes are not functional or they are reduced in number, this group of conditions will then be called the phagocytic defects and today we shall have a clinical approach to this group of conditions. Now let's have a look at few real life case scenarios. Now this is a two year old boy who presented to us with severe community acquired pneumonia and was being ventilated. You have a look at the chest x-ray which shows infiltrates on both the sides. When we reviewed the history of this boy, we realized that this boy in the past had two episodes of suppurative lymphadenitis affecting the cervical and the inguinal group of lymph nodes in the very first year of life which required incision and drainage. Subsequently, this boy also had three to four episodes of bloody diarrhea which were being treated as dysentery by a local physician. Now, if you see a child who comes to you with pneumonia, suppurative lymphadenitis, repeated episodes of diarrhea, we have to think of an immune deficiency. And from my previous presentations, you know that when you think of immune deficiency, immunoglobulin profile carries paramount importance. So we asked for an immunoglobulin profile. But to our surprise, this time the immunoglobulin, that is IgG, came very high, 1860. The IgA was high and the IgM was high. And this boy had marked thrombocytosis and leukocytosis. So friends, do you consider immune deficiency if the immunoglobulin is high? Yes, there are a group of conditions wherein immunodeficiencies can present with very high IgG and that is chronic granulomatous disease. And how do you confirm this condition? A very simple basic lab test and that is nitro blue tetrazolium dye reduction test. Although this name looks little funny, but then the test is very simple, can easily be established. In this test, we look for the function of neutrophils, wherein the neutrophils are stimulated with yeast and you look for the pigment formation. If there is a pigment formation, it's normal. If pigment is not formed, it's abnormal. And as the NBT dye test came abnormal in this boy, the boy was diagnosed with chronic granulomatous disease. So, what is chronic granulomatous disease? It's a condition wherein neutrophils cannot kill the ingested organisms. And this in fact is the most common symptomatic phagocytic defect. And here, the actual defect lies in an enzyme, in an enzyme complex known as NADPH oxidase. And these children present to you with recurrent infections and do have granuloma formation. And that's why it's called chronic granulomatous disease. Now let's have a look at this child. A three-year-old boy comes to us with recurrent episodes of bloody diarrhea. Because he had repeated episodes of blood in stools, he was being worked up in the gastroenterology unit as probable case of inflammatory bowel disease. Unfortunately, this time this boy was admitted with a bad episode of pneumonia. Now this pneumonia would not resolve despite giving him antibiotics for more than 3 weeks. And, and you can see in the chest x-ray there was a patch there. And because this pneumonia did not resolve, we got a lung aspirate. And to a surprise, this lung aspirate showed aspergillus. The moment we saw aspergillus, we tested this boy for immune deficiency and the boy was diagnosed with chronic granulomatous disease. So the message is, anytime you see aspergillus in a non-neutropenic setting, please think of chronic granulomatous disease because aspergillus is a signature pathogen for this disease.